That's Gwent. Hey guys, guys, welcome back to another episode of The That's Witcher 3. Look at this guy. This one townsman, dressed in almost full orange. Orange and green. Very flashy colors. No one else is dressed like that. <laughs> Anyways, we're back here in Beauclair, heading towards um, the Grandmaster Crafting Dude, Lafarque. And um, in this episode, as I mentioned in the end of the previous one, we're going to look into replacing our equipment with something a bit more interesting. I think something uh, exclusive to the Enhanced Edition. And in particular, we're going to go with this one right here. Uh, let's see if I can find it. It's one of these. No, it's not the Gothic. Just keep on going down. Okay, well, I may have missed it. Well, maybe I don't even have the gauntlet piece yet. Oh, probably should have prepared a bit more before starting the episode, but it won't take too long. So, it's not this one. You know, this is very interesting. The meteorite silver full plate. Uh, meditating at places of power imbues the armor with new abilities. But it only has one set bonus effect. Uh, I don't know how interesting this would be. I mean, this is just going to be like a passive boost, I'm guessing. Um, this one, this is the one I want to try using the Dimeridium Alloy Light Plate set. So we get uh, the four piece set bonus is uh, our armor will accrue magical energy during combat. Charges itself and then it releases it the energy when struck by an enemy, which is really cool. I feel like maybe it will just charge up as we get hit and then the more we get hit, um, the more it will charge up and then it will just release the energy the next time. Uh, we get hit after it's fully charged. So, pretty cool. We do get hit quite a lot um, because, you know, I do a lot of guarding and stuff. I don't do a lot of dodging. And then the five piece bonus is whenever we use a sign, that sign gets transferred to the weapon and then um, I'm guessing... <sighs> okay, only if the armor is fully charged. I'm guessing the, s the charge only lasts for one attack. I don't know. If it lasts for more, then that would be fantastic. But as long as the armor is fully charged, I will get um, we'll get some kind of a boost. And it's also a heavy armor set, which uh, is one of my favorites. We're gonna get this whole set: Dimeridium alloy light plate. I think there's also a Dimeridium alloy full plate. I'm not really sure what the difference is. I think I'm just gonna just gonna buy the entire set of diagrams. Don't mind the Gwent cards. Greetings. <laughs> That's definitely a glitch. What do you have on the... Okay, so... And also, yeah, don't mind all of these equipment in my inventory either. Don't look at them, guys. <laughs> They're evil. Okay, so I think I'm going to buy the Dimeridium uh, Light Plate and the Full Plate. Not the Gothic. Let me just go down the list here. Yeah, so here's the Full Plate. Um, gothic, Gothic. Dimeridium. So anything that has to do with Dimeridium, really. They do quite the, uh, cost quite a bit, but... We have the funds right now, it's okay. Meteorite, Dimeridium. Meteorite. Dimeridium. Okay, I think that's it. Alright then. Farewell. Good luck on the path. Okay, so I'm actually kind of curious as to what the difference is between the light plate and the full plate armor. Um, let's take a look here. Dimeridium... Wait a minute. Why is only the full plate armor available? Where's the light plate armor? Um, hmm. Did I not get it? Okay, there's the full plate. These are... Oh no, these are not sorted alphabetically, that's why. <laughs> okay. So, uh, full plate armor. I'm going to have to compare this a little bit. 745... And all the standard resistances. Let's check the light plate. 745. Uh, okay, I guess it's like... <clears throat> maybe it's slightly faster. Um, but we get less resistances. Uh, I don't know. But the, the set bonus is the same. And it looks like the crafting materials are all the same as well. Does it look the same? Pretty sure it also looked the same. You know what? Hmm... Yeah, I think, uh, what the heck, it costs 3,500 to craft? Oh no, 500, oh my goodness, okay, interesting, okay, 
uh, we may or may not have enough funds for this. Most likely not. But if not, I'm going to have to make a visit to the bank to uh, do a little bit of an exchange of currency. But even then, I might not have enough. It's okay. I think this armor set is worth it. Um, oh, Jesus. I did not expect it to cost this much, but whatever. Let's just go with the uh, the full plate. It will reduce our speed a little bit further, but it will have more resistances than the light plate. And on top of that, um, I don't have any of these crafting materials. So just buying these materials will cost a buttload of money. We might not even have enough funds to get this right now, but I'll craft as many as I can and we'll see what happens. All right, so <laughs> enriched dimeridium plate. Is that something I can craft? Because, whoa, 800. That's a lot. So let's see. Enriched dimeridium plate requires two ingots. <laughs> ingots require ores. Uh, and ores require... Or how come ores? I mean, okay. It's <laughs> What about ore how come ores? It's like a whole chain of crafting that we need to do. Ore how come ores? Uh, there you are. Requires dusts. And these dusts are just base ingredients. Um... I'm probably not gonna waste too much time crafting, and why the heck did my inventory weight just go up by so much? What did you got? Oh god. <laughs> that happened again. It seems like... Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, well, it seems like I just get a bunch of random armors into my inventory whenever I scro scroll through my crafting stuff, which is a huge pain in the butt, but <laughs> we'll have to live with it. Um, let's just get started on crafting some of these I suppose this is gonna be a long process and not only that it's going to be a very expensive process too let's go ahead and craft a couple of these ores I can only craft two um, I'm not sure if there's any point in crafting a third one I'll do it but um, well I, okay yeah I needed a third one to craft a single ingot <laughs> and then I guess I'll just buy out five more of these ingots so I can craft two of these Sorry, buy more of these ores to craft two more ingots, and that will allow us to craft one single plate. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, Alright, I might as well buy out the other two ingots as well, so I can craft another plate sometime in the future. But for now, we can, yeah, buy one of these plates. Oh my god, I need two. Okay. Two dimeridium plates. Hmm. Dimeridium plate obviously requires dimeridium ingots, which we can craft actually with dark iron stuff. So let's just do that. <laughs> this is going to cost so much money, it's ridiculous. So the Grandmaster set doesn't cost a lot of money, but this new go uh, dimeridium set costs a ton of money. Wow. So for now, I can probably only do the um, armor. We'll see. So it says I have seven of these armors in my inventory. Again, I'm not going to cheat using this glitch. I'm going to craft it, and then I'm going to basically just keep one of these and get rid of the other, the others. I think that's fair to the game itself. Um, I wonder... Uh, I wonder. I haven't checked the, uh, the mod page in a while. I wonder if this glitch has been patched out, or is this just a local issue on my end? It feels very unlikely that it's just my end because it's a very, it's such a weird and specific glitch, right? When you scroll through your crafting stuff, you get a bunch of random just armors and stuff into your inventory. That's so bizarre. Okay, let's see if I can do gloves. I need one more plate. Um, and one, oh Jesus, I need uh, more leather straps. Let's see if I can craft this plate. Yeah, this will have to be an eventual process. I won't be able to do this right away. I... First of all, I definitely need more money, and second, I will for sure uh, need to have uh, more materials as well, which will require us to actually come back to this guy whenever he's uh, finished restocking. So yeah, let's just do that, buy a couple of these ores, craft this plate, and I need one leather strap. I wonder if I can dismantle something into a leather strap. Let's see. Uh, I'm sorry if this is a little tedious, but just bear with me here. Leather strap. Well, I don't really keep any of these leather ingredients, so it's kind of unlikely that I would have anything for it. Uh, but there's still some chance. Hmm. 
however low. Yeah, I don't think I have it. But maybe the guy sells stuff that can disenchant into leather straps. Hmm, that's a possibility. Uh, yeah, maybe this hardened leather? Recycling, cured leather, and oil. Okay, let's find out. Hardened leather. <laughs> so dismantle this. Oh, come on. There we go. Maybe it's cured leather, leather scraps. And scraps, yep, scraps go down to straps. <laughs> okay, here we go. Now I can craft this thing. The, uh... Ah, uh, there it is. There it is. Dimeridium alloy full plate gauntlets. Haha. -ha. Okay. Maybe by chance I can do another one. Trousers? Uh, I seriously doubt it. Uh, we don't even have the trousers diagram. Dimeridium alloy full plate trousers. Do I have to buy it? Oh man. Ah, uh, let's see. Where would that be? Did I? How did I miss it? Oh my god, if it doesn't exist, I'll be so mad. Huh. Dimeridium. Are you kidding me? Wait a minute. Dimeridium alloy full plate. Wait a minute. Uh, that that can't be a thing, right? It doesn't actually exist. Time iridium alloy. Oh, you've got to be kidding me! It's definitely not in my diagrams. I can check the shop again, just in case I'm crazy and I missed it three times. These are all meteorite. Right? That's like, that's gothic. Huh. Well, that's... That's pretty funny. <laughs> that's, uh... <laughs> oh, my. Um... <laughs> I'm not really sure what to do at this point. The, <laughs> the, the full plate pants doesn't exist. Maybe it entered my inventory. Maybe I can just cheat it. Uh, no, these are light plate. Um, actually, this is this is interesting because I want to test out if the uh, light plate and the full plate work together as a set. If they do, then that's fine. I'll just cra craft a light plate one. If they don't, then I have to find some uh, some other way to do this. So there's the full plate. There's the light plate, and let's see. No, wait, wait. Three out of five. Hmm. Let's uh, add those gauntlets in here. I know I have some. Yep, full plate gauntlets. Um, it says 4 out of 5, which is... Assuring. But... It's weird because I only have 3 of them. <laughs> Maybe it's also counting the earth sign? Huh. Yeah, that is, that is a possibility. Because, uh, I don't know. I don't know why it would count the earth sign. That's really bizarre. Do I have another one, maybe? <laughs> um, no, I don't. Alright. Well, seeing how the light plate also counts for the step bonus with the heavy plate, I think I can go on just using this one. I mean, I would like to, uh, to have a full plate of armor, but uh, apparently the diagram just for the trousers just don't exist. For whatever reason, if I take off my boots, it's still four to five. If I take off my sword, it's still four to five. What? Okay, this is just like the glitchiest thing ever, isn't it? Wow. Tell you what. Um, <laughs> wait. What if I take off another piece? It's three out of five. Okay. Now it's two out of five, and now we don't have anything. But putting on a single piece will create two out of five. <laughs> Uh, maybe the Arondite counts. Oh, whoa, that's... Oh. Interesting. The Arondite counts as part of the Witcher gear? That, that is 
crazy. But I'll take it. I mean, that's that's cool. Um, I thought the game was a little glitchy. I mean, okay, the fact that um, the trousers diagram doesn't exist, it's pretty glitchy. <laughs> but it also counts for the earth sign set, doesn't it? If I unequip the Arondite, yeah. But if I equip this earth sign silver sword... That is 5 out of 6. And then if I equip the uh, Arondite, it becomes 6 out of 6. Oh, okay. 6 out of 6 has no actual benefits. But that's that's really cool. The fact that uh, Arondite, probably one of the stronger weapons in the game. not Definitely not the strongest. Uh, I can think of a handful that, that are stronger. Especially in the attack power um, department. But the very fact that it counts as Witcher gear is incredibly cool. Um, I'm also interested to see if it counts as any Witcher gear. It does, even for the feline it counts. That is amazing. Um, that's actually a very cool thing to learn. Well, anyways, uh, I don't have the materials to craft another one of those pieces anyway. So for now, I will just um, keep my armor and gloves. And whenever I do have the materials to craft the rest of them, because, uh, yeah, Lafarc needs to restock on his crafting components. So whenever he does that, I will come back and uh, do the rest of the crafting. For now, <laughs> just give me one second here. Okay, and we're back. So one thing that I did change up is I maximized the carry weight for Roach's saddlebags. Because as I justified some episodes prior... Um, I just don't really have an interest of keeping track of inventory weight anymore. And uh, I will leave Geralt's weight at what it is right now. It's 170 base. It's 200 because of a passive that also increases it by 30. I will leave that. But as far as my stash goes, I feel like I need infinite carry capacity here just to make it a bit more... A bit less tedious for myself. I mean, of course, I could play with actual real carry weight. But not only is it not as fun... Um, but it's also it's also just very um, tedious. You have to fumble through your inventory a lot. You have to discard items, and I, we've gone through that uh, aspect of the game already. I don't think we need to continue doing that for this DLC, especially at this point in the game where money is yes, it's still an issue, but I want it to be kind of a um, a fair and hassle-free issue as opposed to something I have to keep on. Uh, keeping track of in terms of the inventory weight. Um, okay, I think, uh, well, seeing how we can't really use our Dimeridium set just yet, uh, we'll have to come back to Lafarc at some point or another to see if he's restocked on materials, and also it'll give us maybe a bit of time to um, earn some more money, <laughs> even though we're getting a lot of money from different contracts and selling different things. Uh, we're just not getting enough, you know, it's, hmm. it costs way too much. You know what's interesting is, here's a, here's another glitch. The game constantly duplicates the amount of food that I have in my inventory. I don't know what that's about. I feel like, uh, I don't know, at, at some point or another, they're just, I have, I've had some trouble, just had some trouble with... Uh, crafting diagrams and scrolling through them just gets me different items. Well, if that has to be a food is such a minor aspect of the economy, I'll just leave these be. They they do take up a bit of my carry weight. It's not a big deal. All right, then. Uh, okay, that's wow, a whole bunch of time wasted. I hope none of you guys sat through that. I I, I really don't. I want you guys to not have to <laughs> listen to all of these just random nonsense. But anyways, let's go on to do something here. Um, I think we'll begin a new side quest in this episode. We'll go with this one. We have a quest called Mutual of Beauclair's Wild Kingdom. Uh, while wandering around Tucson, Gero did not neglect his vocation and true core of his existence, namely pursuing and slaying monsters. Yeah, I think we've uh, seen these before. But... We can go to wherever this merchant is and uh, see what he has to say to us. It's going to be all the way up here. The trading post. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, we've already been here before, so I'm just going to fast travel here. 
It was just a bunch of abandoned caravans and dead people. Oh, and now we're in the dark of night Perhaps as well. Abandoned, but a lot of this damage is recent. Guess I arrived just a little too late. Should look around still. <laughs> Relatively recent. Okay, what happened to these people? Man, bled to death. Big beast inflicted these wounds. Clear from the claw marks. Must have a toothy smile, too, judging by what ripped his throat open. Some tracks? Signs of a fight. Paw prints, beastly ones, that's clear. Just on this spot, though. Hmm. Aerial attack. Must have been. Draconid. Gotta be. Maybe a basilisk? Except these prints don't belong to any variety I know. Just a little different. Just a little different. I <laughs> like how there were four eyes on that little. Hello. Area's dangerous. I'd say there's a basilisk nesting around here. You'd be wise to remain at some distance. Yes, I'm familiar with the matter. And quite proud to say a basilisk does nest here. I look after it personally. Look after it? It's not exactly a pet. Beasts murdering folk who come through here. Just a minute. It does not murder those who do not trespass upon its territory. I posted a number of signs, warnings, specifically to prevent anyone from coming to any harm. Well, a lot of good they did. Got a freshly mangled corpse right here. Most likely a merchant, the poor bloke. Just today, I learned two traders had chosen this route despite the signs. I came as quick as I could to warn them. Too late, alas. I've instructed my servants. They shall take the body, return it to the family with a generous sum as recompense. You know, having a sign warning people of a beast in the area where the beast is could be a little counterproductive. You know, you should put the signs all around the outskirts of where the beast might uh, be prowling. Because if you have to go into a danger area just to know that it's dangerous, it might already be too late. You know what I mean? So, uh, he is paying off the families of the victims, which is a very generous gesture, I suppose. Hmm. Pay the victims' families' compensation? Why? These lands have been my families for decades, granted to us by Duchess Ademarta. Beyond them, the basilisk ventures not, hunts not, it does not kill or destroy. Provided it is not provoked. Yet if it does destroy, if it kills, I compensate all for the loss from my own coffers. <sighs> Your coffers? Got a store of sons and husbands in there to compensate for those shredded by your beast? Naturally, I cannot revive the dead, but I do make generous restitution to their loved ones. Just last summer, I paid a leather tooler's widow 800 crows. This unfortunate merchant's family to be duly indemnified as well. Wow, the guy must be insanely rich to be just giving away money like that. Come on. No one who is lacking money will be able to just give away money. Uh, so, claim, claim this to be the last surviving basilisk. Plan to stick to that story. Claim this to be the last surviving basilisk? How do you figure? The last of this subspecies. Their population was much larger at one time, see? Before the beech forests were felled. Mean to suggest a direct correlation between beechwood forest density and basilisk populations? Indirect, I prefer to contend. Beechwood forests are the chief habitat of roe deer, you see. In turn, a staple of the basilisk diet. When roe deer grew scarce, basilisks made humans their staple food. Enter the witchers. And thus, we've come to this one last specimen. It's a female. As recently as last year, we still had two. But your cast's mate passed on, alas. Your cast? Should she not have a name? My father dubbed her in honor of my dear departed mother. Your cast was brooding then. Two eggs. That she cast from her nest, alas, when the male perished. Okay, yeah, this guy really wants to preserve the last basilisk. Okay. Not here to argue with him. But, uh, yeah, this guy must be someone pretty important. 
Who are you? Who exactly are you? And how do you develop such an interest in the beast? Count Borges. Happy to be of service. Borges? As to the beast, well, this subspecies is our dynastic symbol. The Desalfareses have for centuries signed with the Regulus Platinum. As family legend has it, a female of the species rescued an ancestor, a boy at the time, from a burning building. She took the tyke back to her nest, where she fed him as if he were one of her own youngsters. Malarkey. To be sure, but beautiful malarkey it is. <laughs> malarkey. Regulus Platinum. That's a very cool name. Okay, so where can I find this basilisk? Not that uh, he is going to tell us, because I'm a witcher, and he wants to preserve these basilisks. Basilisks? Or just one, I guess, in this case. And, you know, witchers kill monsters. Let's find out. Where's the basilisk nesting? Any idea? Of course I have an idea. But you don't really expect me to tell you. Those are not toy swords. I know your intentions. Find it myself, then. Easy to track with its distinct paw prints. Mentioned two merchants. So I might also look for the other corpse. Is it really worth all these lives? Ask yourself. Count DeSalvaris. Is that what he's called? No, uh, he's called something Boris, but DeSalvaris is his family. Is it really worth it? Ah. Uh, Okay, let's, uh, let's try to find some evidence about the second victim. Basilisk scales are usually thicker, not nearly so fine. Could be more sensitive to fire, this one. Alas, it is true. Your cast has a terrible fear of fire. She's a highly sensitive creature. Rid your mind of any thought to kill her. You would destroy the last of a species. Does it matter if the species is dangerous to humans, then... and it's living in the vicinity of humans... It has to go, right? Strange. These burn marks. Beast venom make them. Subspecies must be highly toxic. It is so indeed. A wound from a sterling basilisk festers long. Need to brew a potion that'll neutralize that. Hmm. <laughs> if we decide to fight it. Busted barrels. Contents spilled all over. Must have been tannin in there. Used to treat leather. Beast smashed the barrels. That's how the scent got on the scale. Your Coco is so very curious. Strong scents especially intrigue her. The barrels, they must have drawn her in. Drawn her to the caravan. Busted barrels slimed with venom. Hallmarks of an attack. Basilisk must have caught the second victim here. Anyway, got two scents. Venom and tannin. Ought to be enough to track the beast. Why track her at all? Your cast is protected. Her death would forever destabilize the ecosystem. Who knows what would happen? I see unforeseeable consequences down the line. Simply refrain from provoking her. Harm her not, and she too will leave you untouched. I've long suspected they do it on purpose. Sent their goods. They seek to lure the basilisk to destroy their wares. It allows them to demand compensation from their assurers. Yes. But instead of compensating all the victims, and then having people dead anyway, why don't we just get rid of the beast? You know what? I'm going to meditate a little bit. Searching for this basilisk in the dead of night it just doesn't seem right. Let's go to at least dawn. Yeah, there we go. Have some bright light. Is this guy still following me? <laughs> he probably is. Let's just follow the scent. Oh, wow. Tricky Others one. Dispersed. Seems to be everywhere. Basilisk must be high in the sky. Blood stains. Clear as day. Alright. Now we can follow these blood stains. Classic Witcher investigation business. Sense perceptible again. Yep, oh, there it is. Oh, there's a second victim. Just as I expected. Second victim, but relatively unscathed. Basilisk must have been dragging him back to its nest for later. Dropped him for some reason. Wonder why. 
there is a note on him. Cooper's Guild. Interesting. Dear Gaston, in reply to your question regarding the planned transport route for the Barrels of Tannin, allow me to confirm. The official itinerary supported by the Guild still goes through the lands belonging to Count de Salvaris. The board sees no reason to deviate from our traditional path. The Count has pledged to cover all eventual damage caused by the Great White Terror, so even in the case of destruction of the entire cargo, the Guild will suffer no monetary losses. You suffer personal losses, so is that not reason enough to steer clear? <laughs> Man, these people don't care about lives at all, as long as money is not affected. But it's no basilisk screech. Human voices. Humans, okay. Uh, let's save the game here. Who do we got? It senses we're truly. Yamal, Harry, prepare the equipment. Beast wandered off somewheres. We got to lure it back. And who might you be? Funny, about to ask you the same. They call us the Reavers. Reavers? Wouldn't happen to hail from Crinfrid, would you? Aye, we do. But how's it you know? And again, who the hell are you? The Crinfrid Reaver Hunters. Uh, these guys are actually Gwent cards in this very game. We've played them on multiple occasions. We And I am uh, Geralt of Rivia. We've got mutual acquaintances. Geralt of Rivia. I'm a witcher. Know your brethren in arms. Bohold, Kennet and Desbrit. New boy too. Ah, you're that witcher. Aye, Boho mentioned you. Said you swing a mean sword. A professional. Good, you came along. Could take on the brute together. Talk is the venom something or a <laughs> There's Borges. Use another pair of hands. Fee what we've gotten from the guild. We'll share it fair and square. You in? Gentlemen, this hurts my ears and pains my heart. You aim to kill your cast? It cannot be. The creature is protected. If you fear to lose the guild's reward, I shall repay it and reward you doubly to leave the beast be. You cannot slay the last living specimen of a near extinct subspecies. Willing to pay, are you? Long as we do nothing? That's rather novel. What say you to that, master? Far as I know, beasts culled the human race by five already. It's going to be a weird moral decision, uh, and it's timed, which I really hate. You know what? Let's do... Nah, we got to do it. Beast has to die. We work together, we'll make quick work of it. After all I told you of your cast, you would murder her? Or you will regret this, friend. I know, folk. I shall tell them you slew the last surviving specimen. <laughs> Sorry, Master de Salvares. Actually, not sorry. A monster's a monster. Silvery, plaid, or polka-dotted, last or next-to-last specimen, doesn't matter. It's a dangerous predator that kills humans. Enough said. Yep. Herbalists, alchemists, I know many. They will despise you. I shall tell them of a heartless cur who cares not an ounce for balance in nature. You shall pay arms and legs for their wares. More! Somebody plug this Lorden's gob, eh? Right, Master Witcher. How do we aim to fight the filth? We've crossbows. Comply with bolts while you do the hack and slash. Or all go at it as a bunch, blades and end, firing our hearts. You decide. You're the one with experience. <laughs> crossbows or battle axes against the basilisk. I wish the game had given me a bit more time to rationalize whether or not uh, I wanted to. I mean, going into it, I was already planning to kill the Basilisk, even though Boris here really, really doesn't want us to do it. And uh, he did He did note that there will be severe consequences for doing it. <sighs> you know what? In the end, we're a Witcher. We get... Uh, do we even get rewarded for doing this? Uh, I don't know. It may have been a bit more lore-friendly to not kill the beast because I don't think anyone's paying us to do this. But anyways, this is a beast, it kills humans, 
and it's a danger to all of civilization in the area. In Geralt's wise words, enough said, right? That's all we needed to uh, to know in, in order to need to kill this beast. Uh, did I make the right choice? Maybe, maybe not. I'm almost leaning towards maybe not, but hey, we've made our choice, and at this point, no point regretting. Let's, uh, you know, using crossbows, they won't get in my way, but they will also... Uh, it would also focus the Basilisk's attention on myself, which is usually not a good idea. Let's just go in at it together. We'll go at it as a bunch. Just stay clear of my sword. Right now, lads. You've heard the specialist. All good and fine, but the monster's not in its nest. Gotta track it down first. Not at all necessary, Geralt. We looked into it. Gave it a think. Traders use tannin to lure the beast. Who says we can't do the same? You got any tannin? Came into a bit, aye. Yeah, willing to do the honors. Tannin. Not really sure what that is. Okay, where is this monster? There. Regulus Platinum. Ah, it is a silver hybrid indeed. <laughs> I'm still holding the bottle in my hand. Alright, let's do this. Let's draw the correct weapon. Uh, I got my bolt at the ready. The Reavers are attacking it as we planned. And it's basically just a regular Basilisk, maybe a little stronger. Um, definitely not as difficult, I would think, as a Slizzard, especially because we have all of these Reaver Hunters with us. Oh, that failed to knock it out of the sky, interesting. There we go, got him. Ah, damn. Still pretty nasty with those attacks. Gotta remember how I fight griffins and stuff because, yeah, that pouncing attack, uh, pretty hard to dodge. Igni, as I remember it, works pretty well on this guy. I mean, there's very little synergy between Igni and uh, my frost weapon, but it is very effective against griffins and stuff like this, so should make use of it. Yeah, let's give it a shot. Huh. Got him. <laughs> he glitched out a little bit in the air. Hmm. All right. Oh, damn it! I knew that was happening. Come on, come closer. Another Quinn. Maybe give him an Ard. Nice. Froze it. Oh, that's beautiful. Three great hits. One more Igni. Oh, nope. That didn't work very well. Ah! Ah, oh, god <laughs> No opportunity to reload my crossbow. Uh, okay. Hard. Oh, it didn't freeze. Ah, oh, there we go. There's the freeze. And... Sorry, noble beast. It just had to be done. like that to fight to the true witcher's side prime the way you swung that razor mate mention some fee from a guild i hear you right <laughs> witcher drives right for the gut a professional right thorough your share friend every last copper as we agreed we'll collect us a few of them silver scales and the tail proof for the guild right Uh oh. Sorry, Mr. DeSalvaris. I'm so sorry. I didn't want it to come I to this. We'll get word of you to some folk. Merchant folk, meaning. They ought to treat you right. Thanks, and farewell.
<sighs> yeah. There is a certain level of regret. Slaughtered like a common beast. Look at Malodlin, sobbing over the vermin filth. Let him be, you more. Blubbed a fair bit yourself when wolves nabbed your helmets. What do you mean? You saying we's like them wolves? No, muttonhead. Beast were to the noble, what helmet were to you? Oh, I didn't didn't know it would just transition out like that. Yeah, man. Not killing it would have given us more money, I'm guessing. But killing it would have given us this trophy. Uh, which is right here. Nothing too special, but I'm pretty sure it looks great, right? Strapped on Roach. It's like kicking uh, Borges while he's down. Not only did we kill his uh, family beast, but we also just hang his head from Roach. No, we can't do that to him. <laughs> we can't. I gotta get another trophy. Um... If I remember correctly, yeah, we do still have the oh, we still we still have the Shalmar trophy, Fiend trophy, and a Gratore. Okay, I gotta find uh, some time to sell these things. They are pretty valuable. Look at all this. Um, yeah, I think we'll hang the uh, the Shalmar trophy from Roach. We're we're not gonna hang the uh, Silver Basilisk one. That's just way too mean. <laughs> there we go. How does that look? It's a little small, but whatever. Okay, and deposit this one here. Yep, wonder if someone will be willing willing to pay a premium for that. <laughs> I'm also going to deposit some of the food I have because I don't need most of these. Um, this one, these ones, they're just duplicates. I don't know what the deal is with that. Uh, peppers are fine, but I don't need these. Okay, uh, what the heck? Where did these armors just come from? And why? Oh my god. <laughs> why are they in my. Uh... Oh, there we go. Okay. Goodbye. It seems like I don't even need to go through my diagrams for them to appear in my inventory. Is the, is the thing getting worse? Hmm. Best not to mention it too often. Your cast. My poor, your cast. Cruelly slaughtered like a common beast. Come on, Roach. Uh, yeah, I do feel bad for the guy, but <laughs> whatever, it's done. Okay, oh, there's another side quest right over here. This one is a big feat to fill, which is part of building the statue of Lebiota. Let's see what's going on here. Ah, uh, look good. Looks like the people who are transporting the statue parts were killed by something. Let's see. Blood. Lots of it. Hmm. Many clues as to... Oh, there we go. There's some footprints here. I'm going to take this thing. It's actually quite valuable. Kiki Moors? Oh, okay. So these are Kiki Moor tracks. Gotcha. Oh, into the water, huh? Oh no, I see them. Here they are. Oh, well, that's quite a lot of them. <laughs> and there's also a warrior in the mix, which kind of uh, warriors me. <laughs> uh, you don't have to listen to my puns, guys. Or you'd have to listen, but you don't have to react to them. Hut. Where's that warrior? I know he's here. Oh, no, these are the workers. Where's the big guy? Careful not to jump into the water with my Quinn. <laughs> Alright. Let's burn up these eggs. And there he is. Hi there. Let's put down a Yurden. I'm going to release my Quinn because this is dangerous fighting next to the water with it. Okay, not so bad. Once he's slowed down by the freeze and the Yurden. Pretty easy to deal with. See if we can actually freeze it. Nice. There's the art at work. And is there one more back there? 
Get rid of the Quinn. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Those are not Kiki Moors anymore. There's some Arcus Moors in the mix. Alright. Ah, uh, two of them. Pain in the ass. Ah. Oh, I should counter that one. That's cool. And this one back here. Oh, come on. Don't get stuck now. <laughs> I'm just really worried that that Quinn would just kill me again. Even if it's just shallow water like this. Ugh. Oh, jeez. Poison's not doing me any favors. Put down a Yurden. Ah, I hate these so much. <laughs> All levels of uncomfortable when I'm fighting them. Especially in a relatively crowded area like this. God. Oh my god. I can't uh, get my boats out. Alright. Uh, that not even hit. Oh no, that oh that definitely hit. Oh, that's so effective actually. Explosive boats for the win. Yes! Finally! I found something that is very effective against these Arcus Boards. Explosive boats. Don't even have to go near them to damage them by a whole lot. Alright. What do we have in here? Letter to mother. Hmm. Bear hide. And yeah, sure, I'll take the armor. Uh, darling mother, forgive me for fleeing without saying a word, but you know if father learned my intentions, he would sooner break my knees than allow me to leave. You must understand, the life of a village scribbler is not for me. I do not want to end up like father, spending my entire life hunched over to tomes and slowly losing my eyesight during days and nights spent in dark offices. I want to live a life of, of adventure. Perhaps one day I'll visit you, my darling mother. Meanwhile, may you know health and happiness, your loving son, Fabrice. Ooh. I think the mother will be very upset to find out that Fabrice is now dead. What the heck are these dogs doing here? Come to scavenge on my kill, are they? Yeah, none of that while I'm around. There's one more here. Alright, good. Now to go back to those Kikimores and discover what happened to the band of people transporting the statue stuff. Um, where is it? Could have sworn I killed more Kikimores than this. Oh no, they're over there, okay. Kikimore eggs. Need to incinerate these to ash. <laughs> we do indeed. And there's this so, little mound here. Missing workers. This is what became of them. Oh, jeez. What, do we still think they're alive? <laughs> no, they're not. One day later. Alright, I, I guess we just transported the statue parts all by ourselves? <laughs> Is that what happened? Yeah, because... Oh, wow. Okay. Good guy, Geralt. That's fine. Um, There's nothing else, really, in this surrounding area. There is... Uh, well, yeah, I suppose there is more of these... Big feet to fill quests that we can head towards. Yeah. Not too far away. Let's go. That's it, Roach. It's a lot of random monsters prowling in Tucson. Which I don't mind, but if they're just common enemies like dogs and kicky moors at this point, I don't think I want to bother with them anymore. Give me the bigger monsters. 
But not the Shell Mars, because they are awful. <laughs> Jump! Oh, nice. I didn't quite make it, but close enough. Yeah, sorry Roach, you're not making it. Oh! <laughs> Come <on>. Okay. <laughs> Get out of that water, you're not making it across this river. Just swim across. Hmm. Oh, hidden treasure. Oh, well, look at that. Definitely want to see what's up here. Or what's down here, really. <laughs> Drowners. And a cave entrance. Oh, let's save the game just in case. Cave entrance. Oh, uh, first let's loot whatever this treasure chest is. Oh no, it's oh, that is the remains of a human. Ship captain's log, a key. Okay, what happened to this dude? Journal is completely soaked. Oh yeah, it's been underwater. Only a few entries can be deciphered. Bellhaven, 23rd day of service. Nothing irritates me more than land rats thinking they're... Sea of the walk. I don't know if I can say that word. Uh... Let's be safe. Yet, Count jean jean Bel Oh my god. Ca uh, jean jean Belerge? Belerge? That's what the impertinent P made me call him. Managed to assuage my irritation a dab by clinking a hefty pouch of Nilfgaardian florins on the table. Illegible fragment. His entourage loaded the ship with bundles and hauled on his huge cage covered with a sail. Count you know what, I'm not going to try to pronounce his name again. Count B explained it held one of those famed Zangoberian striped horses, a gift for Duchess Henrietta. Zangoberian striped horses. Black horses with white stripes. <laughs> uh, Bellhaven to Beauclair route, 24th day of service. We've had nothing but trouble with the Zangoberian horse. It gnaws on the deck like a beast gone mad. Plus, we've got to make sure the tarp covering its cage is tightly fastened, for it seems this creature's as sensitive to the sun's rays as a vampire. In which case, what good is it to the Duchess? A striped horse she can only ride at night? There's no comprehending these aristocrats. Illegible fragment. Bellhaven, Beauclair route, 25th day of service, a thousand thundering sea devils. There was no horse in that cage, but a god's blasted shalemar, overgrown rock rat, chewed through the deck, capsized the ship, and burrowed into the river bottom. Then that idiot Count B fell to his knees and begged me to help catch the monster. He handed me the key to the chest of jewels, he'd kept close watch on the whole trip and swore it'd be mine if we captured that monstrosity. I'd most like to grab a thick club, smack him upside the head, and take that chest right now. But I'm not some plowing pirate. I'll gather the lads who managed to survive the wreck and we'll try to catch the monster in our nets. The Count claimed to know some trickery to use to sneak up on the beast. Hmm. A Shalemar, huh? <laughs> and that actually unlocks a quest. And what was that about again? That's literally the quest name. Oh, red armor die. Nice. And yes, this is going to lead us into the cave here. But before we dive down into the deep, deep dark abyss, I'm just going to surface, get my breath back, and possibly deal with these drowners. Ugh. Uh, come on. Turn around. Ah, yes. Double kill. How about that? Think twice next time you want to come up to me in the water. Alright, this is just more than a little bit creepy. Swimming into the unknown. Uh, okay. Pocket of air here, at least. Um, oh, ah! Speaking of big monsters that I don't want to fight, oh jeez, the Shalmar is still here, how is it still alive? The dude is a skeleton, that means it's been who knows how many years. Although, to be fair, uh, corpses at the bottom of a river or a lake, they become skeletons a whole lot faster. Than those on land because on land they actually have to decompose now unless there are like big scavengers like vultures or i don't know dogs around um to eat the flesh the the actual human body would take a long time to decompose but when it's underwater 
you can guarantee that there will be crabs and eels and other fish picking away at the corpse. It will become a skeleton relatively quickly. So, yeah, I, I suppose this Shelmar is still here just for the heck of it. Um, let's see. We won't be doing too much actual head-on fighting with it because we've experienced that Shelmars are very nasty up close, which means we need to um, be a bit more careful and stay at a distance for the most part. But with Shelmars, it's still pretty useful to have a Blizzard potion, but I think for this one, we'll just do... Uh, actually, we don't even need to do any potion. Oh, whoops. Yeah, whatever. Tawny Owl's fine. <laughs> I didn't mean to drink that, just for the record. All right, let's go. Ah, uh, it's already rolling towards me. Okay, let's grab my, uh, let's go with precision bolts. This guy has a lot of armor. Yeah, okay, cool. Give him an Axie, give him a Yurden, give him a Quinn, and let's get to shooting it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, come on, come here. Yes! Riding right into my trap. Oh my god, yes! That was so good, okay. Shoot it a couple more times. The bleeding stack with the poison is pretty effective. And with the Yurden on top of that. Oh, nope, don't want to get close to that. But I think I can still shoot him. Um, not really. Eh, kinda? Ow! Whoa! That was a big hit! <laughs> okay, come on. What? Ah, there you go. Die! Oh! <laughs> I need to reapply my Quinn. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I find this passive approach to killing Shaomars is the most consistent and effective. If I try to fight it up close, uh, it's big trouble. Okay. Let's loot the corpse. Shaomar mutagen, very good. Uh, let's go deeper into this cave, shall we? There's actually a person down here, or what used to be a person. With some florins on him, alright. And don't think there's anything... Oh, no. There is something here. Ah, alright. Just a, an ore pit thing. Okay. Still need to find the treasure chest, though. It's going to be probably up here. Yes. Take those boots. And oh my goodness. This guy just waited here to the end of his life. Wow. Oh, that's pretty gruesome. Damage journal. A diagram for a new weapon. Tarrell. Whoa. Interesting. And a necklace. Very good. Let's see what this guy wrote at the final moments of his life. Journal kept chaotically. Dates missing. Ink blots abound. What on earth got into me? Humming one of Master Dandelion's ballads in front of her illustrious grace. Ugh. To fall into disfavor in such a foolish way. I, a young ambitious politician with brilliant career prospects at the ducal court, now find myself exiled due to my own stupidity. I must find a way to plead the Duchess's forgiveness. <laughs> yeah. It seems like Anna was so upset with Dandelion that even just hearing someone hum one of his tunes set her off and exiled this person who is in the ducal court. <laughs> like, wow. I'm really surprised that she rescinded Dandelion's execution. <laughs> I'm really surprised because she hates them a lot at this point. I I'm, I'm thinking it's more of a love-hate relationship. It's like she hates him, but she secretly wants to get together with him again. Something like that. They say the Emperor has offered the Duquesa a very strange gift, a Sheomar. The knights are, are to face off against it during the tourney. Now, were I to make a similar offering to her illustrious grace? Inconceivable. The gods have smiled on me. I ran into a witcher in Belhaven willing to help me catch a young Sheomar. Naturally, he demanded a fortune for his services, but I am ready to do anything to get myself out of the Duchess's black books. The Witcher collected a down payment and set off for the Amel Mountains. As far as I know, there's only one Witcher from Belhaven that's named, and he's called Ivor, 
we actually see him once in a different Witcher game. Um, but not for a very long time. He's just a very, very minor character. I wonder that's, if that's him. I've got it. Success. With an offering for her grace worthy of an emperor, I can at last return to the duchy and seek forgiveness. Now I need to only find a way to transport the Sheomar to Beauclair. I gathered my entire retinue and together we embarked on a good ship, Suzanne. With the current in our favor, we should be in the capital in a mere three days. I feel like the hero of some elven tragedy. Just when it seems all is going perfectly, catastrophes fall from the sky and pummel me to the ground. The Sheomar chewed through the deck, sank the ship, and dug its way into the river bottom. I begged the captain to help me capture the monster in exchange for the rest of my fortune. As the Witcher instructed, I will light incense made of rue and direct the smoke at the monster, which should calm it. And the sailors can then capture it in their nets. I am finished. The rude incense did not work. The Sheomar flew into a rage and killed nearly everyone. True, the captain managed to escape, but I could see he was badly wounded, so I doubt he managed to swim out of the cavern. Now I sit here alone, listening to the Sheomar devour the remains of the murdered sailors. You, the person who has found my journal, whoever you may be, take the rest of my fortune, and for what good is a chest of jewels uh, to a pile of moldy bones? But in exchange, please drink to my health, to my sad fate, to the hero of a true elven tragedy. Oh, wow. What was this guy's name? We don't even find out his name. Elven tragedy. Well, an ambitious young politician. Okay. Okay. Well, this is for you, unnamed ambitious young politician. I salute you to your good name. I will drink my SS right now. Hmm. There you go. Hope you rest in peace. Actually, why is this... Oh, okay. I didn't loot the hides inside. Alright, let's move on. And that's that's that. The tragedy of a person trying to bring another Sheomar for the Duchess. I mean, does she really enjoy the first one? It's hard to say. But this second one here seemed like a, it was a lot smaller than that first Sheomar we fought. That first one was massive. This one was barely Geralt's size, you know? Okay, oh, it's good to have sunlight again. Uh, we were heading to this place here. Actually, I think we will leave that for another episode. Uh, for now, yeah, I wasted a bit too much time at the beginning just trying to craft my equipment. Oh, Geralt, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> I hope it's not too annoying, just me going through and crafting... Um, the equipment. If it is, obviously, feel free to skip that. In fact, I highly recommend that you do. What kind of a crazy person are you to sit through <laughs> my actual crafting? Because it is, in fact, a very tedious process. And we've only crafted two of the... I guess it's... What the heck is that? Oh, is that a roach? Were you always here, roach? <laughs> Weird. Yeah, we only crafted two out of the... I think it will be five pieces because I think with these ones in particular, there's actually a helmet piece. Let me see. That would be... Where would that go? I think that would go into tools. No, it's not tools. It can't be boats. I don't know, but I think there is a helmet piece somewhere that I can craft. And uh, maybe it's in armors again. But I'm not, I'm not going to scroll through these again. But... Yeah, it doesn't really matter if there isn't, because the Arondite counts as the fifth piece of the armor set. You needed to unlock the bonus, which is amazing. Uh, it forces us to actually use the Arondite, but still, it's not like it's a bad weapon, right? Well, uh, the next time we come back, uh, we may or may not go back to town to craft another piece of that set. And then we'll just see what goes on from there. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.